Hello, I'm John Wilson, Head of Technical Research and Policy at Dalriada Trustees Limited. This is the first in a series of monthly video logs, or vlogs if you like, looking at the latest developments in pensions law and practice. And this month we are looking at key developments in May 2022. Um, I thought I'd start with some of the key legislative issues that arose this month and May saw the enactment of another piece of pensions legislation, the Pension Schemes Conversion of Guaranteed Minimum Pensions Act 2022, which will be very relevant to trustees of schemes who are currently going through projects to address inequalities in guaranteed minimum pensions following the Lloyds Bank ruling of 2018. Essentially, this piece of legislation tries to facilitate GMP conversion for those schemes that are addressing GMP inequalities by converting GMPs into ordinary scheme benefits. Now, the legislation helps in a few ways, um, but the key changes are, first of all, a bit more clarity in terms of the benefits that need to be provided, particularly for spouses and a bit of relaxation in terms of the reporting requirements when GMPs are converted into scheme benefits. Now, this piece of legislation might not seem directly relevant to trustees who are addressing GMP equalisation using other methods, but it's important to remember that um, even if you use another method for GMP equalisation, it does not stop you converting GMPs at a later date. Now, the GMP Conversion Act does not address all the issues with GMP equalisation. We're still left with some of the tax challenges, but we also understand that as part of the enactment of this legislation, um, other government departments are looking at some of the other issues, including tax challenges, and it's possible we'll see further legislation, which may mean that schemes want to revisit the issue of GMP conversion um, at a later date, even if they've gone through uh, other forms of GMP equalisation projects. Obviously, the advantage being that if GMPs are converted into scheme benefits, then you don't need to worry about the separate overriding guaranteed minimum pension legislation when you're administering scheme and paying your benefits to your members. Another piece of pensions legislation, which has been on the statute books for a little while now, but is only coming into force in June, is the so-called pension nudge requirements. Now, unlike GMP equalisation, which is essentially a defined benefit pension scheme issue, the pension nudge requirements are much more defined contribution benefit centric. And under these requirements, where you have members of your pension scheme that are approaching retirement, and perhaps looking at accessing benefits in the scheme, or perhaps transferring their benefits out to access them in another arrangement, maybe a personal pension arrangement of their own. Before they are able to access these benefits, you have to tell your members that guidance is available to them, and moreover, offer to make an appointment for pension guidance with PensionWise, and before your member can access their benefits, they, they have to actively consider whether they want to go through this guidance or make an informed decision to opt out. Alternatively, the member can make an appointment for pension guidance themselves rather than relying on their pension scheme to do it for them. But nevertheless, um, trustees and employers should be checking um, with their pension scheme administrators what changes are being made to pension scheme processes and procedures for the pension nudge requirements which, as I mentioned, come into force from the beginning of June, 1st of June, 2022. Now, just for completeness on the legislative front, it's maybe we're just worth saying that we have had a Queen's speech very recently, but there was no specific pensions legislation mentioned in the, the state opening of Parliament. So maybe a bit of good news for uh, trustees and administrators of pension schemes. But there was reference um, to legislation which could indirectly 
affect pension schemes. An example is a possible review of data protection laws in the UK following um, the UK's exit from the European Union. So look out for developments uh, in that area, but um, at, at this time there is no proposal for a further Pension Schemes Act. So moving on then for, from direct um, legislative requirements to, to other regulatory news. Uh, and I think the most important development probably in May was that the pension regulator published its latest annual funding statement for trustees of defined benefit pension schemes. Now this is a must read for trustees of schemes who are currently or shortly going through an actuarial valuation for the defined benefit pension scheme. The regulator recognises the, the, the challenges that trustees are facing just now in terms of the economy uh, and, and other important issues like the conflict in Ukraine, but they are still very much expecting trustees to keep a close eye on what's going on with their investments uh, and with their employer as well, the, the ability and willingness of the employer to continue to fund the scheme, the so-called so employer covenant. And this year's annual funding statement, helpfully, as with other statements, includes a set of tables, which sets out the kind of risks that schemes could be subject to, depending on the strength of the covenant and depending on the maturity of the scheme, and some of the mitigations that trustees might consider in response to these risks. So as I say, definitely worth a read uh, and probably should be almost considered mandatory for, for trustees who are undergoing an actuarial valuation at, at this time. Um, one other development may be worth mentioning, completely different from um, the Pensions Regulator Annual Funding Statement, is the so-called HMRC Migration Project. And what is happening here is that most pension scheme reporting and accounting for tax is done online. The HMRC are moving from uh, an older system to a newer system from what was called pension schemes online to managing pension scheme services. Uh, and going forward, the reporting and accounting for tax will move from the old system to the new system. Uh, and why is this relevant to trustees? Well, in tax law, it is trustees and not administrators who are considered to be the, the statutory entity that have responsibility for reporting to HMRC. So it will invariably be the trustees that need to instigate the move or migration from the pension schemes online system to HMRC's new managing pension schemes service. So something to discuss with your day-to-day -day administrators. Make sure that this migration is happening uh, and bear in mind that it may need to be the trustees who log on first um, to instigate the migration, to update some information and to ensure that their day-to-day -day administer administrator is still registered as an authorised practitioner to handle the day-to-day interaction with HMRC moving forward. Um, this is an important development um, simply because the new system is the system that HMRC will be using going forward uh, and if pension schemes do not report an account for tax on time then the, there is always the possibility of interest and penalties applying. So if there are any potential tax charges arising in your pension scheme because of the way members have taken benefits um, or because they have exceeded allowances in the pension scheme like the lifetime allowance or the annual allowance, then it is very important that your scheme is on the new system so that your administrator can properly account and report to HMRC. That's really it in terms of regulatory developments, but, but maybe just one other, other item under the heading of other news. Uh, and that is an update on the Pensions Dashboard programme. Um, hopefully most people have heard of the Pensions Dashboard. This will be a platform, uh, and there may be more than one platform, where members of schemes can go along and view all their benefits, both private pension scheme benefits and state pension scheme benefits in one place. So they'll be able to see the totality of their benefits, and hopefully this will encourage a bit more engagement amongst pension scheme members uh, as well. Um, I mentioned this just now because 
even though the first schemes do not go live on the pensions dashboard until next year, the latest update from those responsible for the pensions dashboard program is that everything is on track, that schemes will soon be getting asked for information, and um, particularly larger schemes who, who will be the schemes to, to go first. Uh, and it's absolutely vital for trustees of any pension scheme that are in scope to start thinking about how they will comply with their pension dashboard obligations. So that's what will happen when they receive a request for information, how will they ensure that the information they provide is correct, uh, and how will they go about providing that information. Will they, for example, need um, some third-party help in complying with these obligations? Again, something that probably trustees should start discussions by speaking to their pension scheme administrator and asking what their plans are for compliance with the pensions dashboard from 2023 onwards. And really that is it for, for, for the month of May. Um, there will be another update in June. In the meantime, um, please don't hesitate to get in contact if you have any question about this month's update or any other questions related to pensions law and practice. You can contact me at john underscore wilson at dowryadatrustees.co.uk. Thank you.